is going to be the first in an ongoing series of uh, drawing critiques. Uh, a lot of you sent in your uh, pictures uh, and they're just beautiful. And I wanted to pick out a good cross-section in several different categories that we can go ahead and apply the uh, five pencil method to. And everything I talk about will be in the context of the five pencil method. And uh, I'm trying to help you understand how you can possibly make your pictures more realistic, have more depth and contour, and, and come alive. Yet, each one of these pictures could stand by itself. Uh, they're all great at their level and what they are trying to uh, uh, convey, and uh, I'm just really excited. Let's go ahead and see what we can do to give you a few suggestions as how how you can go ahead and maybe make them even more effective than what they are already. Okay, we'll designate this first one in a hair series. Uh, that's the primary thing that I think that I will talk about because it's a very, very uh, common uh, situation. And I think this uh, picture will lend itself to having me show you a couple things uh, because it is so well done. It reads very well. There are some things that are just excellent about it. We're looking at it in the context of the five pencil method and so that's what I'm going to try to help you with. As we look at the source and any, any head of hair, you will notice that uh, it isn't very abrupt along the edge. You notice the difference between that and especially the temples. But the temples are very feathered in. Instead of doing this, because you're thinking about the other end, you need to be able to uh, get it down to where you can taper on and also in concentrating often you'll end up by having something that's very structured and everything's very parallel. So there's nothing wrong with with uh, having a little bit of variance in the direction because it's just the way it happens. I don't want to come in here and decide what my hairline is and end up with a line like this that I'm going to have to now put my tapers in because this is going to have a tendency to show through. Uh, this can also happen with a, with a uh, tone. If I were, uh, you know, and I do, uh, you'll see when we work out the portraits, uh, I want to put my value in here first. I want to have all this before I ever start the hair. And as I do that and I decide, well, that's far enough, I'll just stop. This can also present a problem because now you're going to have a tonal shift when you come to the end of that and now you start your hair. You're going to see that, that uh, abrupt ending. So this is one reason why on the sphere uh, and um, a number of the exercises get used to fading it away. If you end up by coming out here and you fade it into where the hair will go, you'll eliminate that sudden end and make it much easier to have a transition. But you can see how this would be far more forgiving for me to put hair in here and not have to worry about having something show through like this or a sudden edge you know, to the value. So when I'm sketching, I, I like to uh, you know, keep an open stroke even when I'm sketching and where I'm going to go so I'm, I'm aware of the direction of the hair. Okay, now, again, I'm not going to try and do this you know, real exact, but what I want to try to show you is this head is turned a little bit this way as well. So there are going to be a couple places where I can have a clean edge because I really, this is really going around and out of my sight. And I can create a little bit of a buffer zone this way and allow me something to pull out of. Now, what I want to show you is that I want to notice where the highlight is. The highlight is down here. On this, on the actual uh, drawing, I don't think it was really, I think this is quite well done. It's, it's not bad at all. But I think that we could have a little more of an apex to our curve. And I'm always searching for the overall uh, apex so that I have contour to the hair. So let's go ahead and pull out of this buffer zone I have with my 2B pencil now. Okay. 
you'll uh, realize that that sometimes you're going to have to go ahead and reverse the direction. So basically what I'm doing is I'm telescoping here and I'm pulling back. Now I get to do what I what I would uh, like to have done on the other side. I'm going to pull towards the uh, apex. And what I'm doing also is I am I am kind of looping, I don't know for lack of a better term, I am kind of gathering at the ends my stroke so that I have an edge developing. Instead of coming like this, let's turn it so it best complements my, my natural comfortable position. Keep looking back and forth between your source and what you're trying to uh, draw here. And it'll look, it'll look coarser. Hopefully we want it. We want it to be somewhat coarse. We want this to have the spaces for right now. Okay, now let's go ahead and take our, our brush. And we're going to utilize this extra lead we put on here because of the 2B. And I can do this without closing the gaps uh, to the point where it becomes smooth. If I have kept the texture then I can go ahead and brush it like this, gain my, my uh, continuity, tone down some of the, uh, the white contrast, and also knock down some of the, uh, the darkest parts. And it just really helps to eliminate a lot of the work that I might have to do. I don't want to do that on the, on the skin textures, but I will do it on here. This is the only place where I want to create a little more of an edge here. Now again, this is not going to be you know perfect. I, I'd have to have the whole head uh, shaped and everything else, but I still want to just kind of give you a little bit of an idea. put a second uh, bunch of strokes on this side here. Now I'm going to pull out of this. This will help me with my how light works. That even though this looks pretty solid in there, I, I can still take my hair strands and make sure that they go into the dark as well. Let's go ahead and brush it. This is our second brushing. These are some of the other things that I might do. I would probably pick out a couple places that might even be the lighter places. And I'm going to now go on past and show a recess into the hair. And I don't want to get too incremental with these as, uh, either. They're just some places where I can go down in between and kind of create some depth. And now let's go ahead and take our eraser. And I'm going to fold this over and make myself a blade. And I will just gently now take out a few of these things that are going a little different direction than the rest of it. Because we have some hairs that are kind of waved over the rest of it. You can take your harder pencil then and clean up the edge as long as you don't put an outline on it. I'll make sure this stays a blade. I can emphasize the highlight a little bit here if I need to. But I sure want to avoid making this look like it's erased.
hood at this point when I want to come into the scalp here a little bit more. The hairline could use one of my harder pencils. Just want to make sure that you're just feathering it on because we just need these delicate little hairs coming down to create that random uh, hairline. down. Now one more thing. I put those light hairs in there and it's probably good for us to have a little bit of tone cast back in there by using the brush. <clears throat> it also uh, gives me a chance to put another hair on there if I wanted to out in front of that because every time I brush some tone into it it will recede it back if I put something brighter in front of it. And remember, the one, one of the things that's very nice about hair is it's very forgiving. Once you can get past the intimidation, you can go ahead and do all kinds of things because you don't have to worry about it being exactly the same. And you can go ahead and do it over. I can take, with the dry eraser pad, I can take most of this off and have a whole nother run at it. Again, this is hard when I don't have all the skin values in here. I don't have the rest of the face to really get a good idea about uh, the proportions and everything else. It's just kind of a freewheeling, let's get some hair in here just to show you. So, forgive me for not being uh, totally accurate with this. And if I find out that I got too dark over here and I'm raising a conflict or a contradiction on, on uh, what my light source is, I can come in here if I'm very careful. Remember, we've been practicing with the eraser so that we can do things like this. I can just lift off ever so slightly that so that it isn't becoming just as dark as over on the other side and now I'm starting to show even more and more of a shaded side to the head. Just get some of this out here because I, I don't want to have to worry about this tone in here when I put my final little hairs on the you know that are going to be silhouetted against the background because then I will uh, have a hard time taking out that tone just a little touch up now. I'm going to take my my 4H, probably could use something else, but I'm going to go ahead and now create a few of these that are probably going up and over. Don't want to get too many. And if they got too dark, we could come in here again and gently tap them back. You have so many options. Let's see if we need to clean up anything else. Just to create depth. Every time I put a hair out in front, I give myself the opportunity to separate it from what's behind it. One reason why I want clean edges, and I don't want these to get like yarn, so if I have to, I can come back in and I can clean this up just a little bit, making sure that I don't put borders on it. Just trying to get a little more tone, make sure that some of these things are receded down into the depths or over here on this other side. my harder 
pencil and create let's clean this temple up here and then naturally it, with this uh, with this all being a little darker on this side because it's on the shaded side of his head then naturally we would want to have had the skin shaded as well. You know, the forehead has a turning point in here and it goes around to the, the shaded side, which would help this not look so contrasty. Okay, so anyway, just a couple, a couple little tips. I hope that this made some sense. Now, Let's go ahead and take this same picture and I want to show you a couple things to watch out for and, uh, and some easy ways for you to be able to verify or correct something. Again, remember when I was telling you about having the, uh, the picture in the same orientation, there's a structure here that's different. This shoulder is way down here and this one is up quite a bit higher. It changes the tilt, gives them a longer neck. It might be okay and acceptable to a degree, but if you want to capture him and you want to get used to being able to find things that you can uh, verify with a straight edge, this is one of them. We can go ahead and pick something. We can pick this angle of the shoulder. <clears throat> and it's interesting that <clears throat> we can come across, like say from the earlobe down, and find out where that intersection is here on the collar. And if I keep this parallel and I go now to the and match up the, uh, the, the two earlobes keeping these parallel with each other, I have a real good idea where my shoulder is. <clears throat> now I could come over here on the other side and I could see what this lines up with kind of lines up with the corner of the mouth. Get a bearing on this side. And it's somewhat the similar angle. So now I've taken away that question in my mind that, <clears throat> well, the shoulders are different. But you see, it really changes his structure. His shoulders are, are now up there in a better range. Anyway, I hope that uh, I hope you can you've learned a couple things. I think something that's worked out okay with the with the hair initially, and then the uh, the opportunity you've got with the straight edge to verify your proportions and structure. <clears throat>